So the follow me tool is like push pull except uh, 10 times at least better. So just to show you, so I've got a shape here. So with push pull, if I select it, hit P for push pull, I can push it in one direction. But with the follow me tool, I can have that same shape. I can pick whatever a wild crazy path is that I want it to follow. And then I can pick the follow me tool and that shape will extrude all along that path, however many twists and turns and curves and odd shapes that I give it. So to use the follow me tool, you need, and I'm just going to go backwards, you need a shape to extrude and a path to follow it, and probably the undo tool because it can be a little tricky sometimes. So we're going to open up a new instance of SketchUp so we can start with a simple follow me tool exercise so you can understand how it works before we move on to adding crown molding to our model with it. You can use um, follow me to make moldings, handrails, gutters, woodworking details. Um, today we're going to use it to put crown molding around our living room. So to open up a new instance of SketchUp, if you are on a Mac, you can just go File New and it will leave your old model and open up a new one. Uh, if you are on a PC, you'll need to go down to the icon at the bottom, right click, and then SketchUp again, and then you'll get a new window open because SketchUp in um, a PC will just uh, it will delete unless you save it and replace the SketchUp scene that you had. So go ahead and let's get rid of Sophie, draw a cube, use push-pull, so start with the rectangle, use the push-pull tool to pull it up. And then we're going to use this top arc tool again and we're just going to make an arc from side to side and make sure you get that unedged snap to make sure that you have got it from each side and you just pull it out and again you can see I'm bidding a little like it is about where I want this to be. All I want to do afterwards is click on this little triangular shape that we made to make sure that we do have a closed shape that we can use the follow me tool for. So I found the easiest way to use the follow me tool is first to select the path then click on the follow me tool then click on the shape that you want to either delete, extrude, or add to um, the form that you're working on. So we want the shape to follow this path around the top of this cube. We're just going to make like an ottoman shape. So we could select those one by one or we can just pick the top face and sketch up um, and the sketch up that implies that these are the lines that we want to follow along to be our path. So I've picked the top face and thus the lines to uh, that make it. I'm going to pick the follow me tool and I'm going to pick this little triangular shape and click on it and voila, we have um, a lovely little ottoman. Okay, that time we used the follow me tool to remove part of the path. This time we're going to use it to add something to part of the path. So I'm going to go to edit, undo to go back to our cube and I'm going to use the eraser to erase the arc that we made. And then I want you to go and orbit around so you just see the flat face of one of your sides of the rectangle. Then I want you to pick this tool that we haven't talked about much before. It's called the freehand tool. And it's really hard to use with any precision at all, so um, it's pretty worthless, I think. However, we are going to use it this time to draw a little squiggle shape. And if you've done that correctly, and you can make your own squiggle shape. You'll see that it's going to fill in. Again, I can select that face to make sure that it's um, its own separate entity. If you hover up, you should see that it's coming exactly out at the same orientation as the front face is. Otherwise, it won't work also. If that didn't happen, just make sure that you are looking straight on the edge of this face. If you were looking at it like this, it might go off to an angle. So once you have that shape made, again, same thing. We're going to pick this top face to imply the path that we want to follow pick the follow me tool, pick this little shape that we've made, and it should follow all the way around. It's not quite the right scale for our little box, but and then I could go ahead and pick um, this internal shape. I'm going to offset it a little bit. If it doesn't want to be offset, I'll just do it this way. I can pick that, use the push-pull tool to push it down, and voila, I have a lovely planter. So let's look at a kind of bad thing that happens with the follow me tool when you create an extrusion like this. If I wanted to get rid of this and just get back to my plain box and started kind of erasing stuff, you'll see that uh, the original thing is gone. So it's hard to just go back um, 
if you're way past the undo phase to get back to your original shape. So this is why we are going to kind of add another step when we add crown molding to our living room space. So we have the ability to take it away if the client doesn't want it. We have the ability to remove it if we want to dimension just the living room space. Um, and we want to just make sure that the rest of our model is clean and it's not destroyed by an errant follow me tool. Getting in a small part of my SketchUp Bootcamp class, a practical SketchUp training class designed for interior architects and designers. This course offers a thorough background in the SketchUp tools and techniques most important to design professionals creating interiors. The aim of this e-learning course is to systematically teach you a progression of tools so you understand how to quickly and efficiently integrate SketchUp into your workflow. There's eight hours of video that you can access at your own pace and as often as you like. To learn more, Go to my website, seedd.com, to the classes page.